So you've probably heard about MCP servers by now. A key part of the MCP concept is MCP clients, such as Cursor and Windsurf. These clients provide an agent that utilizes the tools offered by MCP servers. Now, all of these tools serve very specific use cases, right? Windsurf and Cursor, for example, function as coding IDEs, and the agents they provide are actually pretty, pretty good. But at the same time, if you want to add an MCP server for tasks unrelated to coding while still using MCP servers to manage other aspects of your life, you'll need a separate MCP client. That's where the Open MCP client comes in. It's an open source app that also provides an agent and it's pretty cool how much you can automate with it. On top of that, I'll also be telling you about Composio.dev, which is actually a great library of MCP servers. It even has built-in authentication so you don't have to deal with API keys and environment variables. You just paste the SSE link, which is the URL they provide you, and they handle the authentication. So let's jump right in. So this is the GitHub repository for the OpenMCP client. They've provided instructions on how to install it locally, and they've also hosted the app on Versal. So let's check out the hosted version first, since you don't necessarily need to use it locally if you don't want to. I can show you the installation process at the end. So I've opened the MCP client and you can see that I've added two MCP servers, the Google Tasks MCP server and the Hacker News MCP server. To add a server, you just go up here, choose either standard IO or SSE, name your server, and then drop in the URL or use the command option. If you select standard IO, you enter the command along with its arguments. For example, in many use cases, the command would be npx followed by the path or package name provided. Once you've added the server, you'll see the chat interface right over here. So let's say I want to ask, tell me the latest news from YC. It will use the Hacker News MCP server. And as you can see, let me zoom out a bit. It utilizes the Hacker News Get Latest Post tool to generate the latest highlights from YC about new startups and stories. Okay, so as you can see here, it clearly states where the MCP servers can be found. I've tried both options, but I really like MCP from Composio.dev. Just click on this link and it'll take you to their website. And let me just say, this is a pretty, pretty great tool. They provide over 100 automatically managed MCP servers, meaning you don't have to run them locally using the NPX command or configure environment variables. They even handle authentication for you. Now, I'm also going to show you how to authenticate your MCP servers. They have a really cool method along with some great documentation. If you scroll down, I'll give you a solid example of what I meant when I said you can add tools that don't necessarily need to be used with the agents provided by Cursor or Windsurf. For example, we have a Gmail MCP, a Google Drive MCP, a Notion MCP, and even a Google Meet MCP. If an AI agent is granted access to these tools, it could seriously automate your life. These wouldn't have much of a use case in Cursor, but having a separate MCP client like the one I showed you for these types of tasks, that's a game changer. And this is just the start. This is only the open source version. And while the agent it provides is good, it's not quite on the level of Cursor or Windsurf yet, but it's only going to improve. And just imagine, people will start creating MCP clients for all kinds of different use cases with built-in integrations that essentially act as a personal assistant, managing everything for you. You could control it with voice input, automate tasks across Discord, Google Maps, and tons of other tools. It's pretty, pretty incredible. The future of AI with access to these tools looks amazing. Now let me show you how it actually works. For example, if we want to add the Gmail MCP, we'll just go ahead and click on it. The installation steps are already provided. It's meant for cursor, but that's fine. Just click generate and it'll create your secure MCP URL. Do not share this with anyone, just copy it. Now let's go back into our open MCP client. We'll add the server, Choose SSE, name it Gmail MCP, and then just paste the URL right here. Once we've added the server, it'll appear right here. And now we can actually use it through the chat. So if you want to authenticate your MCP servers, Composio.dev provides detailed documentation on this, which I'll link in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. Basically, there are two ways to do this, and both methods eliminate the need to manually enter environment variables or API keys in config files, automating the process with AI agents. Let me show you what I mean. The first authentication method is OAuth authentication. You start by asking the agent to check the connection. 
which verifies whether it already has authentication or an API key. If it doesn't, you ask it to initiate the connection. These initial steps are the same for both methods. With OAuth, the system will then prompt you to complete the authentication in a browser window. Once that's done, your MCP server can start using the service. With API key authentication, the first two steps remain the same. After initiating the connection, the LLM will prompt you to enter the API key manually. Once you provide it, you can start using the service immediately. It's really that simple. This process removes the need for manual setup and tinkering as everything is automated through the agent. All right, let me actually show you the authentication method in action. First, I want to show you the available actions for the Google Tasks MCP, which is what we'll be using. It allows you to list tasks, list task lists, insert a task, and create a new list altogether. It's a pretty useful and productive MCP server. Now let's go back and take a look at my tasks. I have two lists, each with one task. Since I've already added the MCP server, let's check if the Google Tasks tool is connected. You can see it runs the tool to check the active connection and it tells us that no, it is not currently connected. So let's ask it to initiate the connection. It provides a link that we need to open. If this were cursor, it would open automatically in the browser. When we visit the link, it takes us to the authentication form. After completing the authentication, we can see that it is now successfully connected. There are also other cool services available like Reddit and Trello. These tools are really impressive. Now going back into our MCP client, we can check again. And this time, it confirms that the connection is active. Now, let's ask it to list all of our tasks. It executes the tool and detects two task lists, my task list and test list. However, I notice that sometimes there are issues retrieving tasks. I'm not sure if this is due to a backend issue with the LLM, the UI, or the agent itself. Let's prompt it again. It looks like there's a UI issue because the tasks eventually pop up. Now we can see that it has successfully listed our tasks from both lists. If we click on the links, they take us directly to our tasks, which is actually pretty cool. So this is just one example of how powerful MCP integrations are. There are still some rough edges whether it's an issue with the LLM, UI, or agent itself. But since it's still in development, it will likely improve over time. All right, before wrapping up this video, let me quickly show you how to install this locally. First, copy the repository URL and use git clone followed by the URL to clone the repository. After that, navigate into the directory using CD, then set up the environment variables. You'll need to create an environment variable file, which you can open with any editor, such as cursor. Inside this file, add your Langsmith API key, which you can generate on the Langsmith website. There are two keys available, personal and service. The personal one worked for me. Next, paste the command to create another environment variable and add the required parameters. You'll also need to provide your OpenAI API key as this setup uses OpenAI models as the backend. Once that's done, Navigate back to the root directory using CD, then run both commands in separate terminals for better error logging. You'll need PNPM installed to execute them properly. When you run PNPM run dev, make sure you have poetry installed first. It's a simple process and you can ask ChatGPT for guidance if needed. If you run into errors like I did, there's a quick fix. You can pause the screen to check the commands. They're really short, so just enter them and the installation should work fine. That said, running it locally wasn't a great experience. It was really slow, and I'm not sure what model they're using in the hosted version. It also had restricted permissions, meaning I had to provide the full path for tools. For example, if I used Bun to run something, I had to give the full path, which made the setup inconvenient. Despite that, this is still an interesting tool and a glimpse into the future of MCP clients for specific use cases. It's only going to get better and the possibilities are going to be crazy. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, subscribe for more updates and drop a comment with your thoughts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.